In today's interview, we talk about notification, a complex issue for industry for which we need guidance. There are a lot of turnings to take in order to be able to notify your substances and enter a new market. In order not to end in a dead end street, it is important to think ahead. Our guides in today's maze are the amazing Vincent Wong and Andy Burgess. Vincent works for Millican & Co, an American chemical company, and Andy Burgess works very hard at his own company, Regulatory Services International. Before diving into the details of notification, Vincent, could you give us some general aspects of uh, chemicals management in China and the uh, challenges that industry has faced over the years? Yes, uh, it's been a decade since China first promulgated their new chemical substance uh, regulations. And uh, over the past years, the industry has been working very well with the authorities. There, uh, there has been constant interactions between both bodies. So eventually push, the regulation evolves constantly. Uh, the industry has been working well with authority. I think that's very important. Okay, and one of the main updates at the moment is the uh, guidance for notification. Andy, can you sh tell us a little bit about that features that we can expect from? Sure. Well, the guidance at the minute is still at the point that it's not yet been released as a draft. So everything that we talk about here is still subject to change. But for example, from reviewing and discussions so far, some of the key points that have come out to this have been the adjustment in terms of the data requirement endpoint. And there are quite a few options and potential waivers that can be used. Now here the authorities have gone out to look at what some of these waiver criteria are and they've looked abroad at some of the concepts and ideas that are being applied. And they've brought this and some of their own internal expertise and knowledge together. So in some cases this results in an increased enhancement of the options available so it makes it more flexible and more criteria are issued whereby you can successfully waive an endpoint. In other cases it's more clarification of the minutia of what those waiver criteria are to make it more precise and give clearer guidance. Another feature to this less immediately obvious but has quite a significant benefit for industry comes from the administrative side and here there are quite a few administrative requirements that, re that revolve and require a constant level of update of registration or what companies almost feel like an endless filling out of paperwork. Well, there is part of a simplification process to reduce that administrative burden and workload, both on the authorities and on industry also, and to make it more simple. The core focus behind that is to enable there to be more focus on where there is the greatest concern. So make sure that the regulatory efforts are focused on re really bringing benefit to companies and to the industry themselves. Uh, Vincent, as an experienced notifier, how do you prepare yourself for this update? Well, I think uh, for the experienced notifiers, I think one of the key learnings is that uh, it is very important to blueprint everything. You have to have uh, put up together a very good registration plan based on the volume forecast from your business team, as well as to go through the technical guidance from the authority, the document to see what, doc, uh, what data is required and what is the, the data set, what is the available data, and then put up together a testing plan and that's actually very, very important and also additional to that you have to keep a very close communication with authorities especially the SCC mm -hmm. the window desk uh, to communicate about the unique features of a substance. Andy uh, for those that are considering entering the Chinese market do you have some suggestions for them? The main suggestion I would give here is take note of the complexity this is a complex piece of legislation with many different moving parts. Because of that, you really need some experience and some guidance to help support you through this process. And map out very clearly what the different registration elements are. You've got the main parts of, for example, arranging the studies that need to be performed in China, of preparing and compiling the registration dossier, of looking at the initial data gap analysis and defining what endpoints that you can perform and what endpoints you need to waive. Notifying is one thing, eh? then uh, getting all the information, planning, preparing, then you might be somewhere halfway the road. Then actually the authorities are going to review what you notified. Can any of you share a little bit on how that process goes and how 
much of the total project that would be uh, taking? Well, here there are three parts to the authority review. Um, it starts out with a format review by SCC themselves, and this is, from experience, this is a relatively limited and short-term review, very quick in its turnaround. Then it moves on to the expert committee review. And here it's the expert committee review that can take a significant amount of time. And this is where the major focus and major set of questions comes from. The third and final part is the MEP review itself. And this is more a formal and final review by the authorities to give the approval at the end. After a new substance notification has been approved, the that approval is then transmitted by the central government to the local environmental protection bureau where the sites undertaking registration work are actually based and there the instruction is to advise and direct a follow-up that could potentially lead to on-site inspections and this is the way that the authorities look to focus and follow up on the enforcement site yeah. and also one of the uh a watch out is that a lot of companies actually focus on notification so much that they even ignore some of the follow-up actions after they got the approval. They say, oh, <laughs> let's, uh, we have the approval. But actually, there is uh, more actions to follow up on the first import record, your annual import record, and also if any changes to the substance manufacturing side that eventually change the process, or if you have uh, some new data regarding toxicological or ecological, you need to submit or amending immediately. You know, that uh, also often, very often be ignored. Last question, what are your suggestions for those companies that are dealing with compliance in China, like international companies? There are two suggestions from my side. First is deploy a local expertise, either internal or external. Second is be patient, be local, just it. I would say plan ahead get prepared well in advance with plenty of time because if something can go wrong with China, it is likely to go wrong. You're going to need that contingency. Okay, thank you very much for all your useful information and explaining several of the ifs and thens. Uh, at least you brought it my horizon and brought the notification landmark on the horizon a little bit closer, uh, but it's still a long road. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>